Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a design subcommittee meeting of the Boston Civic Design Commission. Uh, the Boston Planning and Development Agency is continuing to host public meetings in a virtual setting for the health, safety, and accessibility of Boston residents. My name is Christina Rico, and I am the Executive Director of the Boston Civic Design Commission, and I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Adam Johnson, BPDA Urban Designer and Special Staff to BCDC. Before we proceed with the agenda for tonight's meeting, the open meeting law requires that I notify the public that this meeting is being recorded. Therefore, please be aware that an audio recording of this meeting is being made by the commission staff. If you do not wish to be recorded, please turn off your camera and microphone at this time. Uh, for the purposes of the record, I see that we are joined this evening by Commissioners Gillis-Smith, Haseen, Kodaridis, Kim, and Sykes. I believe we are anticipating attendance also uh, by Commissioner Love, but we will make an announcement uh, when she joins. Tonight's meeting proceed, uh, tonight's proceedings will follow typical BCDC design subcommittee format beginning with a brief presentation from the proponent teams, followed by comments from BCDC commissioners, followed by public testimony. Um, a reminder to proponent teams and that presentations will be limited to 10 minutes. BPDA staff will give presenters a half time and two minute warnings. Um, with that, and unless we have any questions or comments from the commissioners, I would like to invite the first proponent team to present. That would be um, the proponent team for 840 Columbus Avenue in Roxbury. Um, and we will join by members of the proponent team, uh, Jason Wills, uh, Christian Galvao, uh, Christopher Jones, and Corey Berg. Thank you, Christina. Uh, on behalf of ACC in Northeastern, I'd like to thank you for your time and attention this evening. We originally filed an IPNF I am PNF for this community in November of 2019. And after working with the neighborhood, the BPDA, the BCDA, the BCDC through many of the building issues and our changing economy, we filed a supplemental uh, package in December of 2023. This is largely a residential building that consists mainly of four bedroom, two bath student apartments with full kitchens and living rooms. And there's been an extensive outreach process with the community in developing a ground floor program for the community economic development space. Uh, the building at this point in time has undergone many significant changes and we're really pleased at where we're ending up. Let me assure this group that Northeastern University, American campus communities and this Boston based team are very committed to getting the building built as we move through this process. So I'll now turn things over to Chris Galveo with Elkis Manfredi. Chris, I believe you're muted. Uh, you're muted. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, hopefully you can see my screen. Um, and so I'll just jump into the presentation if I can. Um, See if I can put these guys over here. Yeah, hopefully it's there. And so um, um, what we changed, uh, this diagram on the left highlights the areas we, we have worked on. Um, the definition of the top of the building, the height uh, reduction on the Tremont and the Columbus Towers, the two-story feel on Tremont Podium, and a further development of the Tremont facade. Um, and so, and so, um, this is the context analysis piece that that you've already been shown uh, in the previous presentation. Um, it shows up the proposed building along the economic development corridor on Tremont Street, and especially the intersection of Tremont and Melnia Cash. Uh, the university and the neighborhood are becoming connected both by uses and and pathways. And so our building and surrounding heights of existing and future heights, uh, future products, uh, the component on Freeman Street showing a two story, that two story reduction and the Columbus component with a one story reduction. Um, this was the previous rendering that was shown uh, last time, um, the rendering on Melia Cass. And so um, 
this is the the, the new proposed um, uh, option that that uh, uh, that we 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 want to show you. Um, uh, we are presenting this. Or we're showing this uh, this perspective because last time most of the comments were made, and therefore most of our changes are best shown here. Uh, we have done several uh, options uh, and decided uh, on this approach, we've, which we are uh, excited to present uh, to you this evening. We have introduced a two-story expression at the base while allowing us to keep the second and upper floors programmatically intact. Uh, on the second floor, we have residential units um, on the upper as well, uh, the upper floors as well. So, in order to achieve this, we have opened up on the second floor, the, the glazed areas, the windows, and inserted narrow uh, gray, uh, gray brick piers uh, to visually make that connection to the ground floor. Uh, also on the on the south portion of this treatment street facade, uh, we still have that darkened brick uh, to relate to the lowest three story inset uh, bricks on, on Melia Cass. We've left the, the lower uh, floors from two to four on that uh, as with the same red brick on Tremont Street. Um, and then again, so the, this vertical zone has deeper horizontal brick bands that accentuate uh, that inflection shown on the entire facade. So the composition of this facade uh, shows subtle but effective modes. Um, we have also introduced a more detailed and and a sense of depth uh, to the top of the tallest tower. That, there's a cornice as well uh, that also has a slight projection. Um, here you might appreciate a little bit better the relationship of the ground floor uh, piers with the second floor on Tremont Street. Uh, the reinforcement of the inflection point, um, uh, a little bit more uh, better treated or better seen uh, on the and the, then the top inset panels with darker brick that relate to the three-story bricks on uh, inset bricks on on the Melnia cast. Also, uh, you can see how the top of the tallest tower has more definition. There's a lighter feel uh, to the tower. Um, so as as you can see, the, these two podiums have have different heights responding to internal program, but also creating uh, diversity. Uh, playfulness and a scale along the profile of, of the building edge. This is a view along uh, Columbus Avenue showing the two-story podium again and how it steps down towards the neighborhood. Uh, and in between we have terraces and levels on levels uh, two and three which, which help with the activity as uh, shown on the ground floor. A view from Tremont Street uh, and Melnia Cass showing those uh, two-story expression uh, on Tremont Street with wider glazed portions that relate to the ground floor. A very transparent corner at, at the ground floor pouring activity uh, to the public realm. And so this is the close up on that Tremont corner. Again, uh, the two story expression, the, the relationship between the front three story brick uh, and the dark brick on the, on the top of a portion of the South Tremont facade. The horizontal bands uh, are a little bit deeper uh, on that southern portion to accentuate that inflection of the on the overall uh, facade, and uh, on on the base, uh, the introduction of awnings and operable windows to emphasize the porosity and softness uh, into the building. There's a view uh, from Tremont Street uh, showing how the podium level slides below the upper floors to meet the base of the Renaissance Park. There's also uh, great activity and energy on that public realm. And then in the, this is a, a, a long view, uh, sorry, a, a view along the um, uh, the Melniaca sidewalk showing those operable windows and the porosity into, into the building. Um, so, so we looked at the neighborhood material palette, which uh, uh, where you can see the historical variety and richness of, of the brick and stone. And so we poured that those precedents into our palette, showing warm textures and tones that we have poured into into the building. And then this is the the long view uh, from Columbus Sab, showing the, the the three main building components, which are being identified with different facade material finishes. 
Um, and then this is a, a long view uh, from Freeman Street showing that proposed massing uh, of the Crescent parcel uh, on the left, um, then also our reduced height on Fremont Street Tower and the treatment of the top of the tallest uh, tower as well. And then um, Corey uh, will be presenting the, talking about the ground floor plan. Great, thanks Chris. Um, so my name is Corey Berg. I'm the director of campus planning at Northeastern. Um, so the ground floor at 840 Columbus Avenue will serve as a dynamic welcoming center for community engagement through economic development programs and initiatives. The initiative will consist of multiple programs that will address critical needs and areas of interest that were expressed by the community in the following four categories, educational access, jobs and workforce development, small business retail, and lastly, capacity building for organizations that work to address economic development. So we heard at our first subcommittee hearing that the ground floor should feel open to community and have a main street feel. So in response, we're proposing the following high traffic uses on the ground floor along Tremont Street. Local retail with clear signage, a Northeastern liaison, or a source for how to navigate the many Northeastern programs and opportunities for partnerships, and a co-working space for local businesses, neighbors, and community nonprofits. In addition to these publicly accessible programs, in order to create a ground floor facade that is distinct from our institutional buildings, we'd like to introduce operable glass windows that blend the interior with the exterior public realm. In addition, clear signage and wayfinding will invite the community through multiple entries along all three public streets. Finally, the ground floor will be open for pedestrian through traffic, connecting Tremont Street to Columbus Avenue and onto the pedestrian bridge between the recently completed EXP and ISEC buildings. I'll now hand it over to Chris Jones to talk about the public realm for the landscape. Chris, you have thanks. two I only need one minute, um, but thanks. Um, so from our plan, from where you saw it before, there are really two significant changes at Tremont and only at Cass and one minor change at Columbus Avenue. Um, I think some of the feedback, maybe it was David Seen who mentioned that our treatment of Tremont Street, um, previously we had a very large continuous green space that separated the street from the public sidewalk and we were pocketing some seating within the, in that space, um, which was responding to the busyness of the street. But I think as we heard that comment and um, thought about it and, and the program of the building, in this location, we felt that we ought to provide a much more transparent solution. So the green began to be uh, large open plantings that um, protected or essentially separated a series of seating spaces along the way, making that much more visible and transparent uh, from across the street and in all directions, and also adds a, a significantly more seating to Tremont Street itself. Um, and Melnia Cass, um, the city asked us to take out the median. And with that, we were able to basically take all that additional space and give it to the public realm and the streetscape. Um, you'll note that we bent the, the bike lane so that the, the addition of that dimension didn't just go street side, it actually went to the pedestrian side, allowing us to create some social space and gathering um, along that green furnishing zone and also to incorporate uh, quite a bit of seating and activity at the main entry of the building. And then lastly, we we uh, take some of that furnishing, we uh, infuse it at the furnishing zone at the entrance to the building of Columbus um, so that we can really direct traffic to the uh, crosswalk and, and the students aren't walking directly out and into the street. So a subtle little ad to just kind of promote uh, directional movement. Um, and with that, I will stop. Thank you. Um, commissioners, I open it for discussion. David, I see your hand up. Yeah, hi, thank you. Uh, Chris, could you go back to the before and after um, that you opened with? This view? Yes, thank you. All right. Let me... And then the after. 
And the other one, yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm very enthusiastic about the changes that you've made, um, and um, I really appreciate that. You know, I know some of these moves, lowering the the height and so forth, had to have been challenging. Um, but um, I really think that adding that second layer of richness to the facade um, has uh, made a, is a, a, and to the top of the building. Um, and I like the striation. Is that where the core is? The striation of the of the where the two of them meet. Um, I think it it helps give you a sort of a visual understanding of the ensemble and how they all work together. And um, I hope, Chris, that you're happy about it too. <laughs> um, I I really do because I think it's I think it it's really much stronger. Um, as a composition, and the details are are much richer, and the the penetration of the second floor, um, you could go closer there on that corner, but the 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 sort of interlocking that is starting to become more evident, not just between the buildings masses with each other, but within the building masses of these elements that are engaging, cutting through, and so forth, um, which is obviously a part of the idea. Um, so and then I, I think that the uh, move of getting the median um, off of Melnia Cass and contributed back to the public realm also seems like a huge win uh, for the for the project. So I don't know if that happened since the last time we met, but that seems like a, a really great change. Um, and um, and I appreciate that that we're not uh, treating Tremont Street like like it's a. Uh, um, like it is what it is, which is a busy street, but that we're 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 actually kind of treating it more like uh you know the rest of uh, uh Tremont Street and Columbus Avenue. So I I just want to say that I feel like you really addressed many of the comments that we had, and it feels like more of a of a a landmark for the neighborhood without shouting landmark. Um, and I I think that's uh great. So I'm. I'm very pleased. Thank you, David. Uh, your comments helped a lot, really. Um, Are there other commissioners who would like to contribute comment? Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen this project before, but I do appreciate the kind of social spaces, Chris, that you made um, on the streetscape, I think, especially kind of acknowledging front entrances. I think they're going to be really popular with this population. And you know, I just look forward to seeing um, a little more information about materiality and the typology of uh, furnishings, because it feels like that's really important to this design. But I do like there's a kind of more organic room-like quality um, in the areas where you have space to do so. Um, and I was just looking back at the older iterations, and I think having breaking up that um, along Tremont, that planter, um, I think makes probably is a, an effective way of doing this. But I think I could just see this being very popular. A lot of students will be using the space and I think it'll be very effective. Thank you. Commissioner Sykes. Uh, I agree with McGill. I think the ground plane, uh, you know, it is a very important component of this project. And I think uh, you've done a, you've got a lot of great ingredients and look forward to understanding that a little better. The one thing I was gonna say is that, um, Melnia Cass is a very dynamic road, mostly because it curves. And so how you see buildings varies depending on the distance from the building. I think one thing that would be helpful would be to understand this building's presence on the skyline, um, perhaps going back to Washington Street and, and equally going back in either direction on Columbus Avenue, um, because Columbus Avenue has changed a lot, uh, or Tremont Street, I should say. Um, it has, you know, become a lot taller. It's um, when you add what's going on across the street uh, with the housing work, uh, it, it just gets very hard to understand it in static images. 
because this building looks in some ways very wall-like while elegant um an elegant wall I, I guess i'm willing to understand it more as an object than a wall uh, but i think it requires kind of experiencing it a little more dynamically um from both directions on tremont and then um and then further back from uh washington street and maybe even further than that but those those are my comments um i mean it's elegant it's simple but i, I worry about the wall-like characteristics and, and i'm i worry about them symbolically let me just also say that i mean this this is sort of the hollow ground from the time that people put themselves in front of bulldozers to prevent the and the cast from going through further divided by the orange line, especially in this location because Ruggles was above grade, uh, although Southwest Carter Parkland was depressed. And so, you know, what you do here is kind of emblematic of how the university reaches out and makes a statement to its embracing the surrounding community. And I'm sure that Northeastern is quite sensitive to that. that. For instance, this view to me is feels better, of course, uh, because it's a little more volumetrically diverse. But let me stop there and give my fellow commissioners a chance to uh, speak. Go ahead, Commissioner Gilly Smith. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. Could we, I'm, I also haven't seen the, this project before. Um, I'd like to mainly talk about the landscape site plan, but I did want to compliment you on the materiality, um, and the richness and almost not kind of the contained collage of some of the switching of the, of the colored bricks, which I think is quite beautiful at the at the pedestrian scale. Um, I think partially because of the tightness of the building, you can be a little playful with the um, positioning of, of those materials. I, I'm actually very excited about this project, having not seen it before, because we're working across the street at the Crescent Parcel. And so actually going back to the, to the site plan if possible. Um, so from a programmatic perspective, I think this will be not only a very significant and popular add to the Northeastern community, but to a, a very significant add to the, to the Tremont Street, the growing Tremont Street community. Um, I, I think that the, it, it, it is a very nice to take take that bend of the median and add it to the to the public space. I think as the landscape develops, which I think is all, already looking very nice, I think there's very very skinny slices of green that I think will be pretty hard to maintain. But but I think that 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 can be developed. Um, but I like the the generosity of not only the social space but of the the walkways along the street. Um, I, th I think it's setting a nice tone for the, the development of the street. So I'm, I'm excited about it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cotaritas. Yes, thank you. And thank you for a very nice presentation. And I was at the last meeting, so I, I want to acknowledge the changes you've made and, um, and the choices, both of materials and colors that, um, that you have emphasized here. They're really very, very warm and nice. Um, I do want to share Commissioner Sykes' concern about height. Um, I recognize the need for density here and all of the economics of building, but um, I remember when the the building further south, I guess, um, was constructed and what it felt like walking along uh, Ruggles Street. So the view from Ruggles across the street from Roxbury arriving at um, uh, Tremont Street being um, pretty stark. So I, I guess as, I don't know that there's much that can be done there, but the Renaissance Park building, at least so-called, um, will, will really um, present um, starkly um, to anyone walking from the Roxbury side. So the sensitivity to the neighborhood's character, I think is something that I would be, and continue to be, concerned about. But that all said, and at the risk of overstepping the bounds of our public realm space, I I appreciate, thank you, Corey, very much for overviewing what will happen and, and some pretty interesting um, and exciting plans at the ground level. I just want to emphasize that I hope that that space and the promise and vision that and dynamism that it's expressing for the neighborhood 
um, does come to pass and is super well managed um, and that there are really good partners in the community that are in partnerships maintained for um, that continued um, dynamism. I, I just want to make sure that the promises to the community both are kept, but also that the assistance embedded in all of the, the desires that the community is expressing are also delivered. So um, yes, forgive me for using my soapbox, but I think that that will be super important on that very prominent corner. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any comments from the proponent team? Any clarifying statements that you would like to make in response to comments that you've heard from commissioners here before we ask for public testimony? I just wanted to emphasize that the comments that we got last last month were uh, spot on. You know, I'm, I'm not just saying this. It helped us go back and review and have more options. And we studied a couple of options. We're only showing you one, but uh, but I think that that uh, we try not to do too much, not to transform this building into a Christmas Christmas tree. And so then most of the of the, of the um, gestures, uh, um, I hope, uh, addressed all the comments that we, we did last, uh, we got last week, last month. Thank you very much. Great, and I see Victoria, you have your hand raised. Yes. Hi. Good evening, everybody. Apologies. I'm a little under the weather. I uh, just want to respond. One clarifying um, point to Mick Young's comment. The We're trying to focus this to be slightly different from institutional edges that we have and making it more of the, one of the comments we got last time, but also something we heard from the community a lot is that a lot of our edges, while open to the public, don't feel as inviting. So our approach here was landscape and was the programming mm. is really to bring community. Uh, we are also coordinating with the Crescent Parcel Project. Um, so we'll be in touch with them, mm. but you know they're also in a similar position in a site plan kind of review and advancing the project. So we do want to communicate about what this exactly the programming and how do you create kind of a, how do you ensure that you create a two-sided Tremont Street instead of a single-sided um, experience. It is a tough, tough street to cross. Um, the And the other clarifying point I want to make about Melnia Cass, it was a request from the city um, for us to remove the median so that we can have a dedicated drop-off. So the Melnia Cass project is a significant mitigation measure that uh, Northeastern is undertaking with ACC. So removal, restriping and creating a dedicated a dedicated turn lane, plus improving the signal for the bus only um, entrance into the Ruggles uh, bus station. So it, it, it did benefit our public realm. We're not gonna, um, creating a more safer drop off, um, but it is also, um, it was also a part of, um, you know, partnering and, and working with BPDA transportation folks and BTD uh, to get there. So yes, it is a change from the last time we were here. Yeah, you know, Chris, I was just thinking about the comments I made about what exactly is the material. And I just wonder, um, as uh, other people have mentioned, you know, this is a busy road and and you have a demographic that's young in general. And I just wonder if you could think about making this really playful, like that mm -hmm. kind of reflects what's happening inside and, and that there might be some inside outside furnishing, like so that you could really kind of, maybe there's like, um, there's a lot of the precedents you're showing are lovely and elegant, but I just wonder if this is an opportunity in Boston to make something like when you show the interior, there's these pops of color and all these things. And I wonder if in the exterior, you could do that as well, like get some Vendome furniture and light it at night. And I know Northeastern is a global institution. And um, I just wonder if it could have a little fun and people would stop and say, what's happening here? So just a thought. <laughs> We're all smiling at that comment because Victoria actually asked 
asked me specifically to make Tremont more playful. So it is on the list of things to, to study as we continue with furnishings and materials. So I'm glad to hear we're on the same yeah. page. <laughs> we are. This, we will we'll work on that. This was a, a very, very last minute ask. Um, yeah, no, I, I appreciate but... that. And I'm in support of wherever the commission, my fellow commissioners are moving this forward and would be happy to just review things whenever we see this next, um, just as like cut sheets of furnishings and recommendations rather than, I know that it's a very tight timeline, but um, Great. Um, if there's no further discussion, I think I'd like to just um, open it to public comment at this time. Um, so we'd invite any members of the public in attendance who may wish to contribute public testimony to raise your digital hand and staff will call on you. If you are calling in by phone, press the number nine on your dial pad to activate the raised hand function and dial six to mute and unmute yourself. Please state your name and any relevant project affiliation information and please keep comments to two minutes. Um, commissioners, at this time, I'm not seeing any uh, public testimony. Uh, so, well, I, I mean, I, at the, I, I guess I'd, I'd like to make a motion to approve, with the understanding that when they come back to the full commission, that some of these questions that McYoung and others have asked can be um, part of the final uh, vote presentation. Yeah, I'll um, second that. I don't think we have to do that, right? Well, yeah, I don't think you have to do the <laughs> former Robert Rules of Order, but I appreciate the... <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, it's all good. So I think um, I'm hearing that the project, um, that there's sort of general comfort with recommending this project for final consideration and vote at a future... Um, well, one second. I would, I would ask that the issues that I raised about um, a better understanding of it from its various perspectives be part of the presentation if we're going to proceed in this manner, I think. Yep. So I, th I think a more comprehensive understanding of its its effect on Tremont Street and the longer uh, impacts on uh, the south, well, east, I guess it's east-west transit on Melnia Cass would be helpful. And I sketch up model, whatever forms that you want to do that. Sounds good. We'll bring uh we'll bring long views and um an animation. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Sykes. Okay. We will consider this matter closed for now. Um, and we'll see you at a future convening of full commission. Um we are thank you very much. Incredibly, yeah. 10 minutes. Thank you. Well, that might be a BCDC first, I'm not sure. Uh, but we oh. actually have with us the proponent team for 80 to 100 Smith Street in Mission Hill. I think uh, members of that team, Ben Juan and others, David McKay, you have already been um, promoted to co-host. Is there anybody else you need promoted uh -huh. to begin your presentation? The, do we have, is Christina, uh, Stephen is here. I am not seeing Christina Stevens in attendance. Do you want to just take a second? Uh, yes. Christina, while we're doing that, Christina or Rico, um, can we lead off with folks who've seen the project before as we typically do? Because I think that helps set the tone and, and to be fair to the proponents uh, in terms of what they've responded to and, and fair to us as commissioners to hear what our fellow commissioners prioritize who spent the time to understand it, so. Absolutely, thanks for that note. Yeah. I would have to uh, look back at the most recent meeting minutes um, very quickly, <laughs> but I think I could come up with a list of who that was if anyone needs a refresher. While we're waiting, um, I don't know if I can make this recommendation, but because we have a smaller group, um, I'm wondering if we still need to raise our hands or whether 
we could actually even encourage conversation amongst commissioners as people are speaking. Um, is that possible? Yes, I would be very supportive of that. <laughs> Do my fellow commissioners agree? Yay. <laughs> I will We're talk relief. to you, David and Sean. <laughs> Like a real conversation, you mean? What? I don't know. I, What's I, don't, that? I don't know. I'm not. I've lost that skill. This also gave me some time to text Commissioner Love, who was recused from the previous project. Hopefully she'll be joining us shortly. Ben, did you hear back from your colleague? I have not yet, uh, but I am able to move ahead. Uh, her, her slides are towards the end of the presentation anyway, but I am able to speak to them if needed. Okay, Ben, I think we are um, ready at will. Yes, I agree. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and begin your presentation. Um, happy to slow walk the timer here. Okay. Uh, is there any prelude you'd like to offer or should I jump right into mine? Uh, you can jump right into yours. Okay, great. Uh, good evening, commissioners. My name is Ben Juan. I'm a principal with Rody Architects. Uh, the last time we were before the commission was in December, where we had some uh, great feedback about some of the building massing, materiality, and ways to improve the site plan. Uh, so as uh, maybe many of you may recall, uh, I don't have a lot of recap here. I've owned the presentation towards the changes that we've made, but these are uh, proposing two new buildings at the Mission Church campus in Mission Hill. It's uh, replacing the former convent and the former St. Alphonsus Hall at 180 Smith Street, respectively. They front onto Smith Street and St. Alphonsus Street. And some of the comments that we heard last time, uh, really chapter one and chapter two there, you can see in my presentation, I'll sort of loop and group together. They were around the building massing, thinking about how uh, the project has streamlined and clarified the building's footprints and their massing forms, but still to find ways to draw them closer towards each other in terms of bookends, both being new construction in a historic context. How can we uh, both make them feel like they're of the same development, but also find new ways to allow them to transition from the more urban St. Alphonsus Street down towards the more sort of smaller scale and natural landscape of the mission baseball fields, which 80 Smith Street fronts onto. Uh, 80 Smith Street was feeling too institutional in its architectural language, uh, find references from the context in the neighborhood. And is there a way that the materiality between the two buildings could be more closely interwoven? Uh, then uh, the last chapter, which hopefully Christina joins us in time to present, but otherwise I can share with you, is around the site plan, find ways to find more open space, more landscaping, and reduce the sort of, uh, impact of the parking court in that area. So chapter one, uh, this is the site plan as we presented it in December. Uh, 
the previous design had uh, foot plates that floor plates that had sort of L's and projecting forms that poked into the inner courtyard areas. And by streamlining the footprints, as we presented in December, we had some good uh, sort of uh, agreement, I think, among the commissioners and our team that that clarified the building forms in a nice way that also opened up the site plan to allow these great view corridors that preserve views of the Basilica from the public ways. Another significant change that we made, uh, there she is, Another significant change that we made uh, in that December meeting was to move A.D. Smith away from the sort of two material, two form approach. So 100 Smith still has what's in brown there, the contextual masonry base, and then the blue is a taller form that's meant to be a part of the St. Alphonsus streetscape and a part of the contemporary urban skyline. But 80 Smith Street moves away from that sort of two language approach towards something that's more of a fabric building. It's meant to be a part of the campus, it's embracing its eight stories, and is uh, working to uh, be more confident in the scale of, its, of itself. Uh, some of the great comments that we heard in that commission meeting involved thinking about not just the St. Alphonsus and Smith Street as public faces, but also thinking about this uh, playground facing elevation as a public face and how we can think about that also as a transition between the context where we're building. So the Basilica has these really monumental scale, has these larger massing forms. How are we transitioning down to the smaller scale of the Mission Main with its two and a half to three story clabbered siding, its gabled forms? And then to think about infusing A.D. Smith with a more residential scale. So you see that there are these sort of bay forms that set up the rhythm of Mission Main. If we were to start to introduce those as a transitional architectural piece that threads ourselves both in to the Mission Main, but in a larger scale that can transition to the larger campus. So this uh, slide was presented in December. This is showing that Smith Street streetscape, those brown forms, uh, which are the masonry masses fronting on and creating kind of a smaller scale along Smith Street. And then the way that we break that Mason reform as it turns the corner to front on the baseball fields, but really keeping all of 80 Smith as sort of a singular architectural reading. Then that second layer, that next sort of intermediate scale you could introduce, looks at how we can further thread 80 Smith between Basilica with its uh, larger mace, larger forms, it's sort of the, the regular rhythm of the bays of the transept compared to those gabled bay projections that occur on the smaller scale buildings of Mission Maine. How can we take some bay forms, introduce that residential scale to 80 Smith Street and start to transition in height following the topic, topography between the church and those smaller scale buildings. So how do we take those mass forms, those adjustments to the massing, how do we thread those into our ideas around materiality and character? Uh, this slide keeps showing up because it's pretty core to the uh, architectural concept for the facades of the buildings. We know that these are going back into a very historic context. They need to be of the richness of the campus where we're building. So we are still looking to the former buildings 100 Smith Street there on the right, which fronts onto St. Alfonso Street, and 80 Smith Street there on the left, which fronts onto the baseball fields, thinking about those, uh, the masonry richness, the tall vertical elements, and still some of those window clusters uh, to inspire the facades of the new building. And this slide takes our proposed new buildings, abstracts them to a bay, and then talks about how the rules of our materials are being applied. So first, if I can draw your attention to sort of the colored rectangular bands. Uh, 100 Smith Street, the yellow, we're showing the way that there's two planes of brick, and we've taken those and played with them to create a sort of a basket weaving type approach, where there's a series of reveals that start to create a little bit of movement in the base. And then as you pull up into the tower, that form gets sort of uh, elongated and stretched out to be more about the urban scale. So a secondary panel in an accent color has a larger sort of movement gesture as it moves up the facade of the building. Thinking about 80 Smith Street then, again, taking these two planes of masonry, uh, one that has a more regular frame, uh, instead of moving away from the basket weave at the larger scale, and that starts to draw a little bit of a connection between the base of 80 and the more the larger scale groupings of windows and facade movements of the tower at 100 Smith Street. 
and you can see these secondary panels setting back, setting up those uh, uh, header and sill conditions, creating not a pair of twins, not even close siblings, but more cousins in the way that the materials are being applied in terms of their, their sort of weaving and their planes and their movement. Ben, you're about halfway. Thank you. Uh, so this slide, uh, subtler in its change, uh, 100 Smith Street was feeling very comfortable in the way that the masonry base was stepping. So the rectory at four stories, stepping down to the grammar school, stepping again to our base at uh, 100 Smith Street. And I'm happy to pull up older renderings from previous presentations as needed. And then the urban sort of tower form lifts up, separated by this zipper accent material and sort of a quiet application of uh, similar but different uh, material palette at the upper floors. So here we're showing a phenolic panel with a kind of um, uh, terracotta type color to it in a phenolic panel. Uh, I want to show the way that the 80 Smith Street changes from the previous where it was moving very starkly towards kind of a institutional feeling, maybe civic building with its uh, lighter sand tone and a dark roof. And we've pulled that more towards warm oranges and, and browns so that we're trying to create more of a cohesion between the material palette of 100 Smith Street and 80 Smith Street and push those roof forms away from that dark towards something that's more of a, a lighter to medium tone uh, standing seam material. So it really does start to disappear as a roof. To focus in on those material changes, so this is the design as we presented it in December, really hewing a little too closely to those um, the tripartite windows that we found at St. Alphonsus Hall, the verticality of the facade, the kind of rhythm of the windows feeling a little bit too civic or institutional. So pulling that away towards something that has more residential window patterning, bringing in these new glass bays that start to erode the scale of the building more, trying to stitch it within the context of Mission Maine, and looking at just a warmer palette overall, uh, something that's a bit softer with the backdrop of the greenery of the baseball fields. Two minutes. Okay, so this looks at that building just in context of the overall uh, campus and the way that that change introduces more shadow lines and uh, step in scale from Basilica towards Mission Main. So the last section here, uh, a really great improvement uh, we feel to the site plan. This is as it was presented in December, showing 23 surface spaces in the sort of truck maneuvering zone with those nodes between the buildings. So what we've done is we pulled seven spaces down into the lower level garage. And we've been able to find much larger spaces for gathering and larger uh, connective tissues of greenery and introduced more pockets to really focus in on what the truck really needs to move itself around so that you're creating these end vistas of planted trees. And for the last bit, Christina, I never leave you enough time. Uh, Christina, I'd like you to walk through some of the landscape improvements. All right, I, I'll zoom through this as much as I can. Um, so what we what we are seeing here is a fully porous site. We've got very welcoming edges along the streetscapes where we want to invite people in and hopefully peaks of artwork, seating, uh, event activity, and views of the Basilica itself actually um, would provide a draw for neighborhood residents to explore further. Um, there's no dead ends. Everyone can um, freely filter through this site, and that was very important because we don't want this to be a big block. We want it to be stitched into the neighborhood. Um, so we've got a design that's a series of rooms, and they're, they're defined by seat walls and some specialty paving. Um, and then at most importantly, as Ben had mentioned, we've got that parking court and as you remember from before, it's got the materiality of a pedestrian area. Um, so we can talk about that, I think, in the next slide. Thanks. So here we're imagining what that parking court really could be. So if you blocked it off to traffic, um, it can serve as a program event space for the community, like block parties, flea, farmers markets, festivals, celebrations. Um, so those flush curves at the edges will allow free pedestrian movement. Um, and that expands the perceived landscape. Um, here you can see a whole bunch of activities, which you can probably imagine. All right, next slide. Uh, we've got two pages, I think, of representative imagery. 
from a slightly older design scheme, but they do represent the materials, the character, and the scale of the spaces. You'll notice a simple materials palette. It feels established, warm, speaks to longevity, um, and it makes reference to the site's layers of history, and it even celebrates that. So here we see the interface at the streetscape. So you can see how welcoming and open it is from, there's the furnishing zone right in the front there in view number two. And view three, we're seeing a shared space between 190, and that's marked by that specialty pavement and some lighting. Next, please. Okay, and last page. Um, we can see some garden-esque compositions of the seat walls and planters that I was talking about, which defined our outdoor rooms. That back walk, which takes us through a shaded way past 90 Smith, and where that red car is, that in a um, event time would actually be pedestrian space. So all that to the left would be filled with people and, and tents and whatnot. Um, and in that last image there, you can see there is an art piece in a small plaza zone. And this is just a stand-in for any art piece. Um, the goal would be to incorporate art, which has real meaning to both the historical site and its users, and also have direct roots in the existing surrounding community. Um, and that's where we need the community to tell us uh, who are the artists that they wish to elevate and the stories that they wish to tell. Christina, you are right at time. Thank you. Um, you have additional slides that you need to get through? No, ah. thank you. We're good. The thank you slide. Okay. <laughs> um, so, Commissioner Sykes, to your point previously, I just wanted to flag that um, the most recent meeting was staffed by Commissioners Love, Lubinow, Sykes, and Gillies Smith. The fifth presentation of this project to the commission that was first introduced in February of 2023, and as Ben said, was most recently reviewed in December. So I open the floor for discussion, and as Commissioner Kim said, no need to raise hands. Please uh, talk amongst yourselves. I, I wasn't on the last one, but I did see it, and I don't know how long ago it was, but it was a while ago. I'm just wondering, Christina, if you could just walk us through since the previous presentation where you've got a lot of feedback from all the commissioners, what's kind of been revised about the landscape and then we could go to kind of the last meeting. Cause I'm just, if you could refresh my memory from that last presentation, I know there was some discussions about maybe there are too many walls and there could be a simplification and some things like that. But if you could just refresh my memory from that last meeting, sure. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, what we had heard was um, we needed to show a variety of spaces, um, and we were showing spaces that might not have had enough variety in terms of their use and their scale. Um, and so that was something we were focusing on with the materiality, trying to define those spaces and also make sure that they each had their own feeling. And then we also um, heard the biggest thing that we had heard was trying to get some more public realm in here. Um, so Ben was able to move those parking spaces and that was a huge victory because we were able to expand that area. The going down here is south. So I'm imagining that this area below south of 90 Smith is, is quite sunny, I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be a lovely place for that larger expanded area that we have, which would tie right into the parking court when there was an event there. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I think that's very exciting to see the kind of transformation of, of, um, of you know, an event. Um, I, I still have, I'm looking, I'm just digging up my notes. I still have the same concerns I had, I don't know if it was nine months ago, um, that it does feel like in the areas that are not in the parking area, because I think there's lots of great things about that event. And they showed us but there just seems a lot going on here and I just wonder if there could be even further simplification of both the geometry of the walls and the number of curbs and walls throughout the space so it's a concern I had um, a few months ago and I still have that concern about the project that it's not a big space and 
I do like the diversity of uses that you have here. And I just wonder if there could be a little more thought put into how the different uh, rooms are defined. Um, each one is, a little, is pretty different, both in shape and seems like in material. And would love to see you work on that a little bit more. Yeah, and actually, McKeon, I'll just sort of follow up because I was was on the last meeting. Um, okay. And first of all, I really do appreciate the 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 greenness of like expanding the green in the parking. Um, I think I was asking for a range of scale of spaces, but mm -hmm. I think yeah. that I also because the scale of the spaces were relatively similar. I right. do think agree, and I think I may have mentioned it last time that there is there seems to be a lot of different types of languages, some very historic, some very contemporary. Um, the next plan is, uh, I don't understand the paving in the next plan, if that's, if that is intended to be a different type of paving, or if that, could we just click to the next plan? Um, sure. The plan with the colored, is this? That would be chalk just to okay. celebrate whatever's happening at the Okay, office. okay. Yeah. So so imagine. so that that goes back to, um so that we can go back to the other other plan then. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm not um I I think from a, an architectural language from an architectural language or landscape language when we're looking at the architecture of the landscape, I do think that it is for the scale of the spaces, I think there's potential I think there's too many different things going on um, and it's a little bit hard to see because the the images are very the renderings that we have are the renderings from the last time that are very um, somewhat historic looking um, but then but then you're trying to pick up on a more contemporary language so I, I I'm in agreement with McYoung with on, on this yeah, thank you for that. We actually, maybe we've gone too far in the other direction because we had the exact opposite um, feedback at one point, and I think maybe we just took it too far. <laughs> so thank you. So I think just to close the landscape discussion, uh, although I'm sure my fellow commissioners will have additional comments, we'd just love to see like a diagram, which just had like two colors of materiality of walls and maybe heights of walls that sort of pulls us back from the rendering. And the rendering is lovely, um, but my hunch is, is that there could be a further simplification as, as Shauna has, has said. And I think just to give us a little bit more information and for you guys to you know, go back to the drawing boards and look at ways in which you could kind of knit this landscape together a little bit more. So Ben, I'm going to follow up and I think, can you pull up a rendering of A.D. Smith or yes. one of the full site? I mean, I, I just want to start and say thank you for the presentation. I really think that um, you've addressed some of the concerns I had in particular in regards to having, you know, windows that are more residential in scale. Um, to try to limit that civic looking um, uh, character that it was you know, showing in the last version. I also can see that you, I believe you stepped down that front massing as it starts to get closer to the fabric of the lower scaled housing. Um, is that something that just happened in this iteration or am I just misremembering? I it, it previously was the same number of stories, but I think moving away from the verticality of the facades just gives it. Yeah, maybe uh, that's. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's funny. I, it, it definitely looks, um, the massing really all is altered okay, by the Great. windows and, and the actual color of the brick. So I definitely feel like this is moving in a much, you know, more positive um, direction. Um, and so just wanted to at least address and comment that that's, you know, in my opinion, it's going in the right direction. Um, what about 100 um, Smith Street? Can you show a perspective of that view? Because if I understood you, yeah. 
So the change you made here is in that glass belt, that reveal, is that what happened here? Uh, we, at the last commission meeting, uh, it felt like the comments were focused around 80 Smith Street and the way that it was responding both in its massing and in its materiality. And uh, the, the changes that we made from to 100 between February 2023 to December of last year, those were the changes that they felt like they were doing very, making the right moves in terms of those massing. And I'd be happy to pull up uh, an earlier before and after of those slides if, if it'd be helpful to talk through it. Um, it felt like the, the masonry of this form could stay as more kind of a, um, simple form with just that layer of brick detailing mm -hmm. and the way that it threaded itself into the St. Alphonse streetscape and stepping down in its height and then letting the tower be something um, simpler uh, and, and larger in its scale. Uh, I, I don't have in my notes particular uh, comments asking us to revisit some of the facades of 100 Smith other than threading the languages between the two of 80 and 100 Smith um, in, in, more, in more ways. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm remembering and I and I was just wanting to make sure. I think this is, you know, I think that you've made a lot of changes and I think you've been responsive to our comments. So I am feeling really comfortable with this. I do think that the arch entries is just a remnant from a, a, a different phase, but that's just me being nitpicky more than anything and, and something that I'm sure you will resolve and figure out what the right you know, syntactical moment is to get close to the windows, stay apart from the windows, et cetera. It might be that it's just almost too tall, those arches, but, um, and I'm pleased that you were able to get more um, space that's open to the public by re eliminating those seven parking spaces mm -hmm. in the back. I think that is, as somebody mentioned, a huge win for this project. So, so uh can I piggyback on maybe on, on some of your while the slides are up on some of your architectural comments? I saw this a long time ago. I didn't see the last uh, image, and I'm 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 uh, I can appreciate that a lot of work has gone into this, and I, I feel with this particular building a lot more comfortable. I think that the um, that the scale of the base is is helping the tower quite a bit. Um, I think that um, in the nature of theatrical lobbies, um, which we're seeing a lot of, I mean, I think. You know, maybe an arch is fine. I think it. I, I like the idea that it's not buried in the facade of the grid and that it's expressed somehow. But of course, there are a lot of ways to do that. Um, so uh, I I feel like this site has uh, has uh, achieved a lot. If you could flip to the other building for a moment, the other. Um, I think the transformation here is ex extremely positive. But in the spirit of what's happening on the uh, other site, which is a kind of um, uh, adding weight to the base of the building. In other words, you know, really anchoring the building into the site at the scale of the historic buildings. I do wonder if the bay windows here are actually not helping. It's the upper tier of bay windows are not actually helping you. I feel like if the bay windows were were dropped um, as bay windows often are, you know, in relationship to the street, particularly the three that are up the street. Um, if those actually came down instead of riding high on the facade, I wonder if that might not anchor the building um, into the, the streetscape and the scale of the surrounding houses and better uh, buildings better than what you've got. And that might be something I don't feel strongly about it, but it, I know bay windows are lovely in apartments and there might be other ways to do that. But, um, um, and you're trying to take advantage of views. Um, but when you look at that long view across the park, um, yeah, um, you know, in some ways here, it really feels like the, the, the bays are, actually the only bays I see here are the ones that are up high um, that are sort of addressing the park. But maybe there's something about that, um, first three story scale, which is happening on the other building that could be reinforced or echoed on this site. So there, it's not so much about matching the colors or the materials or whatever, but it's about that scale. And if you could pick some sort of a view where we see the two of them together, I think maybe it was the last one, 
Um, uh, no, yeah. Um, like I think there's you know, the break in the bay in the bays that you have um, is very powerful on the front. Maybe it's as simple as bringing those bays down all the way and having a similar break on the side so that you're really reading that horizontal line, which is relating to the belt coursing in the building and relating to the strong horizontal cut that you have in the other building. And I think just doing that would maintain the variety that you have, but would really bring the the scale of the pedestrian experience of those and the context into the composition a little bit more. Does that make sense, Ben? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing it. And it's another way that it's even stepping back to the massing of the two and how, you know, we, we didn't want to be too heavy with, uh, you maybe you remember from February a year ago where we had a four story and then a four story on this building because yeah. we were trying to make the two bookends massing have a dialogue between each other and just it didn't work with an eight story building. So this, in terms of the big moves of the massive of the masonry to the to that roof form felt like we were landing at a place where the building was clear and legible yeah. uh, in terms of what it was. But then now I think the introduction of the bays and the window fenestration has done something to start to connect itself to Mission Maine to the neighborhood. I think we've not known we've you know over the past week or two we have had some great conversations with BPDA urban design staff about bays being maybe a thing that can be the thing that that affects the facades, but I think we haven't known exactly where to place them, but I think your comments give us a set of rules and a set of guidelines that can start to give them a larger purpose within. Well, the I, yeah, I would never want to think of my comment as a rule, but I, I just think that there's something <laughs> there's something about that horizontal line about uh, it's already there. It's already in the facade. So mm -hmm. to me, it's just about strengthening it somehow. And there are, I think, a lot of ways that you can do it. But if I could squint and make the relationship of that horizontal line to the horizontal line on the other building, yep. I think the whole composition would be a little bit stronger. Yep, I hear it. Thank you. I, I don't want to be redundant. I think you, you've done a lot of what we asked in terms of breaking down the scale of this building and trying to make it more referential to the scale of Mission Maine. So I, I appreciate that. I think you can continue to simplify it. Um, you know, there, you've got three so incredibly distinct buildings. It doesn't create, take much to create variety. And, you know, and I think it could potentially take it back a notch or two and you'd still be there in terms of uh, you know differentiating each of the buildings so uh you know i'd encourage you to continue to do that um i you know i think the landscape moves are going in the right direction i'm actually excited about the chalk drawing in some ways because i imagine um that's going to happen I, and but it is a part of the site that's not very visible to the public except from the church, uh, you know, open spaces. But it, it could be interesting to think about stamping it or doing something different because your your tenants are going to look at it um, in that courtyard. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of tall buildings that look down that probably would prefer not to see asphalt if you can help it. <clears throat> so pavers, stamping, et cetera. <laughs> But uh, I, I would just encourage you to continue to simplify because I just think there's a, a lot of variety between the volumes that you either had to start with or have created on San Alphonsus and that, that lets you maybe take it back a step on A.D. Smith. So those are my... Actually, Kirk, could I just comment, follow up on what you're saying there? I think that I agree with you. I think it could, I, there's, there's, it feels like maybe there's one material too many or, or something like that. But, um, you know, I always feel, I, and this is a personal opinion, but uh, in Boston, you know, neighborhoods have material character or, or districts have material character, character. So I know that, you know, sometimes we want to create variety and, you know, et cetera, but sometimes you're also um, it's a bold statement, I think, on Wareham Street here in Boston. You know, every building is red brick and someone built a yellow brick building. And it's kind of like, wow, why'd you do that? <laughs> um, and 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 um, and there has to be a good reason. You know, is there like a is there a functional reason? 
um, or is there a programmatic reason? So for me, I'd love, you know, what, what's a shame in a way about these renderings is I can't, I don't see the color of the church. Okay. And I don't see the color of the of the of some uh, you know and I know some of those towers are red brick, but I think that and I'm not advocating for red brick. I'm just I'm just there's a but maybe this is a place where there's a tonality to this district, a palette for this district, which would help you simplify the number of uh, colors and materials that you have on the building you're renovating and the two that you're adding. Just a thought. Sure. And just to clarify, so 90 Smith is was previously renovated. It's not in the project scope. Okay, so sorry. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so and you know, as a red brick in between two things, that could be very powerful if the you know, I I maybe the, the two flanking buildings should be more alike in order to highlight the brick of the of the of the building that has been renovated as opposed to um, sort of weighting one material, very, the red warm materials very heavily to one side of the block and having much cooler materials on the other. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just suggesting that when you develop that final, final scheme that you think that through so that it feels like, this feels to me like a composition of buildings, like a campus. You're talking about it as a campus. And so the thing about campuses is they have, you know, very clear material character. So think about that. Okay. So yeah, on, and it, oh, sorry. Oh, but, sorry. You go ahead, Kathy. I'll follow yeah. up. Well, I was just going to pick up on on the color distinctions, but but also just staying on 80 Smith for a second. I, I do think with the change to the the gray tone in the the upper stories, you're actually picking up the color of the basilica, the the gray granite which I hope does in fact, and, and I'm not commenting on the color as it's presenting presented in this rendering, just what it is in actuality. Um, and I appreciate you're having made that change, but with all the, the focus on the, the richness of the masonry and emphasis on detailing in the, the masonry, I, and in form, I have no issue here, but I, I find the upper story material to, to be, um, so much so different from the the quality of what you're you're showing in the masonry on the lower floors that i i wonder what what's going on there why is it so different and and what is it um it it, it presents it almost seems to be almost a completely different building than um the the lower four or five stories so can you explain that a little bit? Yes, thank you. Uh, I appreciate the, the, the comment. And there is uh, some ideas of threading this building's material palette back to uh, the history of the campus. So I can go back to this, this ancient diagram, which uh, you know we've abstracted. So there was an idea of referencing the former buildings that were there. So 100 Smith Street and its red brick had this kind of continuity from the rectory through the grammar school to 90 Smith. <laughs> And then there was this great kind of transition to the hall. I mean, admittedly, the St. Alphonsus Hall was a very different building, a very different use. So it sort of had this great punctuation where it shifted to this Roxbury pudding stone and gray granite with this really kind of nice orangey masonry to it. So, uh, and then there's a greenish copper roof to it. So there, there was a lot of that history, which I think our conversations with the Landmarks Commission, there's been a lot of resonance to that and a lot of um, sort of happiness with the way that we've tried to thread that that connection back to history. Um, but then if I can talk back to that rendering, uh, there's really been a drive to make it so that, and I, maybe it's the, it's not rendering well, but it's meant to be a standing seam type material that's, I'm thinking about London and Paris and these kind of, uh, you know, buff and sand tone buildings that have this presence along public ways and then the roof, we can't quite do any of the folding or the pitching that we can see in other kind of roof forms of, you know, like Par Hausman's Paris. But that's the idea is that this is meant to feel like a roof form sitting atop uh, a masonry base. And maybe there's some uh, textural reading that we can draw out from that, uh, try to show that there would be shadow lines falling on each of those. It's, it's, uh, it's not meant to feel like a shipping container plopped atop of a building, but it's meant to have that kind of a historic character to it. Yeah, and, and I apologize if I didn't say this correctly, but I actually have no issue with the form as presented and even the 
obviously the the setback and nor the color. There's something about the material um, on the top that seems to be a contradiction to what your the the masonry of the lower stories. It it just seems very um, uh, um, flat and and metallic and in a way that I just I think does not do justice to what you're trying to to present here. But that just may be my opinion. <laughs> so maybe I'll pick up from there and just to almost reiterate both what Kirk and David said, going back to A.D. Uh, Smith at the base and maybe a perspective, maybe it's simply bringing, and this is, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just talking about, a you know, talking out loud. <laughs> Maybe it's as simple as bringing that simple brick form down to the ground and simplifying that, mm -hmm. you know, volume that you're highlighting. And, you know, David is spot on about that band being more legible. And so maybe there's a, you know, the bays are below that band and then the back volume, they're above that band or something. But I think that simplifying it and maybe bringing that volume down to the ground mm -hmm. would be beneficial. Um, yeah, I, I can see uh, absolutely the way that maybe there was a balance of materials, but now that we've introduced these glassy bays, there's a lot more visual richness to the predominance of the facade and having that base middle top and the different tones of the sort of metal panel is 100% uh, agree that there's some simplification. Yeah. That can happen. And in my mind, this this brick color may not be true is relating to, you know, the basilica, <clears throat> which is a buff tone color it is. Mm -hmm. um, with that gray, you know, corbeling at the corner. So I, I definitely think the palette relates well mm -hmm. to the basilica, which is immediately adjacent to. Yeah, we could do better with our context in the renderings. Yeah, I think some context I think would be helpful. Should we go on to public comments? I would be happy to, yeah. Um, so for at this time, we would like to invite any members of the public in attendance who may wish to contribute public testimony to raise your digital hand and we'll call on you. If you're calling in by phone, press the number nine on your dial pad to activate the raise hand function and six to mute and unmute yourself. Please state your name and any relevant project affiliation information. Please keep comments to two minutes. Um, Martin Yenborn, are you able to um, unmute yourself? Martin, are you able to unmute yourself? Hmm. We can also try um, Allison Pultinas. I see you have your hand raised. Are you able to unmute yourself? Sometimes what we've done in the past is we've told them to sign off and sign back in and we wait for them to come back on because it looks like Allison is trying to get in. Allison and Martin, um, I've made you both co-hosts to see if we could get around this issue. Um, perhaps try signing, signing out and signing back into the meeting to see if you're able to unmute yourselves. Oh, I think I I was just able to unmute myself without logging out. Do you hear? Do you hear me? Hear you, yes, we, we can. can hear you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Martin Weinborn. I'm a Mission Hill resident and I attended many of these meetings. So uh, I enjoyed hearing about the, uh, the landscaping and street, streetscaping progress that has been made back with further input. I think that's great. Uh, the issue I have is uh, it feels somewhat premature 
to discuss um, details about the the design of the uh, of the buildings. I'm not sure whether you are aware. There was just a public meeting about this project last week, and there's like overwhelming opposition to the pure height and massing of these buildings. So I wonder like whether it isn't like an inefficient use of time to discuss like details about the uh, the, the the architectural uh, compositions of these buildings if it's unclear whether they will ever be as high as shown in these buildings. They could be significantly reduced if the public is listened to. So I personally feel like very much reminded, especially by 100 Smith Street of the urban renewal building across the street, uh, like which is I think nobody likes in the neighborhood. And it kind of feels like a, an echo of past days of urban renewal. So my question is, shouldn't this the discussion of the detail, details of the architecture of the buildings be uh, postponed until we have like a firmer agreement on, on the height of the buildings? Thank you. Thank you, Martin, for your comments. Allison, are you able to unmute yourself now? We seem to be experiencing um, some trouble hearing you. Allison, if you have unmuted yourself. Well, I think, um, Allison, if you're able to, oh, I see that she, she left. Yes, I I think she's trying to rejoin. Okay. Oh. Allison, we're going to give it one more shot here. I see that you've rejoined the meeting. Are you able to unmute yourself? Okay. Maybe Allison can uh, send us written comments um, so the commissioners can read her thoughts. Absolutely. So if there are um, any comments from commissioners in response to public feedback, I know we don't need to uh, take a vote tonight, but we do need to um, come to some kind of consensus on what next steps are for the proposed project at this location. I mean, it feels to me like there's, um, there's a thread by some of the commissioners of um, that the design might need a little bit more uh, iteration and um, kind of simplification from landscape to architecture. I've heard my fellow commissioners talk about that. I would, I would love to see this once more in subcommittee before it moves to a kind of bigger venue, but I'll defer to my fellow commissioners on this. I agree. I, I I am uh, mindful that they have come a few times, and I wonder if Christina, if they do come back, if you know the review can be somewhat soon, so they're not losing a lot of time, because I do think they are to refinements that um, seems like there's interest in in seeing them, but I am mindful that they have been back to us a few times. Yeah, and Christ, like uh, if Christ, I could make Christine. a quick recommendation about the landscape, I feel like it's really the the difference between the left and right side. Um, and Shauna, step in here if you just to give a because I feel like I keep giving these very broad. I don't want to get in and design, but um, I feel like if the left and the right could relate to each other more, it might help uh, just in terms of materiality terms of shape of spaces, et cetera, et cetera. 
Okay. And I guess I had a question too, which is um, the one of the members of the public mentioned, if I maybe I'm misunderstanding, but that the the overall height of the project has not yet been right. approved. If that's correct, oh. um, I think that we should get a better handle on where mm -hmm. that's going because that is a rather significant factor in evaluating the architecture. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I could give, I, I could try to put some history or Dave, I don't know if you are. Okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to understand where mm -hmm. you are in your process. Go ahead, Ben. Okay, uh, and I, I wonder, uh, so this, and I, I, of course, I could go back uh, more than a decade in terms of its history of this project, but uh, I, as a refresher, this project was uh, approved through the Article 80 process in 2005 at eight and 14 stories, and this is going through Article 80 again as a notice of project change uh, and essentially maintaining, keeping within the program and within the uh, scale of that originally approved development. And uh, through our conversations with urban designers at the BPDA, um, through the, the way that we've been diagramming the, uh, the stepping of our buildings down from the 21 stories and the much larger buildings across St. Alfonso Street down to 145 feet and 13 stories at 100 Smith and to 80. There, um, from our team's perspective, and I'd be happy if anyone at BPDA would uh, have any other color to add to it, but there's been an understanding that this, from the city's perspective, is it acceptable in terms of height uh, for this site and for this location. Uh, notwithstanding that there has been, at every community meeting, uh, there have been comments uh, in response, particularly to 100 Smith, but also to 80, that the project, uh, the neighborhood feels is, um, uh, they're not comfortable with the height as it was approved in 2005. Okay. Dave, I don't know well, if there's I, any more context that you'd want to add to that. No, I think that's accurate. All right. Well, I mean, I think that, um, you know, we've got, we've gotten in the habit of, of hearing from um, urban design staff and so forth about, you know, what the history and background of a project is and what the city is supporting. Um, and so I, I'm not sure it's altogether fair for you to have to defend that. I mean, I, I, I can see that the neighborhood has has strong opposition to the height. So, so um, that I, I, I whether whether you come back whether that's a matter for subcommittee or something that's ultimately expressed and presented when you come back to the full commission um, by BPDA staff, I think that would probably be helpful for context, right? Um, so that's just my recommendation to you because it it seems like from the neighborhood's point of view that isn't resolved. It yeah. hasn't. Uh, um, Commissioner Hassin, I think um, Ben's characterization that this is a notice of project change and that review at this stage, um, you know, sort of um, took yeah. into perspective. It's taken that into account. Yeah, previously approved massing, that that's where the um, the discussion sort of started. Okay. Well, um, that's, I just wanted to, I just wanted to understand that that's, that's fine. That's my recollection because when we first saw this project, that's how it was presented. Um, and there I, is commentary in the chat that mm -hmm. seems to suggest people feel differently. So I, I just want to acknowledge this. <laughs> so why don't why don't we suggest this? It sounds like we're going to have another subcommittee design. If we can have the BPDA staff attend and explain, you know, the position, I think it would be really helpful. We, that would give us some understanding of. Um, what the city is is thinking in this shortage of housing, this era of shortage of housing. So I, I think it would be super helpful to have that context. Thanks, Mimi. Um, great. So then I think that I'm hearing consensus here that the um, project will, um, it, uh, that further review at design subcommittee is recommended at this time. With uh, with respect to what Mimi said uh, regarding that, you know, th this has been over a year now since we were first in front of the committee, uh, and we have come before multiple times. Um, the project actually recommenced in about 2020. It was just before the pandemic. I, I, we would appre appreciate it if you were able to expedite that meeting so that we could come back before the subcommittee uh, in a timely manner. I will do my very best. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, let, let's let's try and be clear about 
what we're asking them to come back for so that that it's it's narrow um uh it sounds to me as if this is primarily a landscape issue i'm assuming that some of the architectural issues that we talked about could be theoretically handled and massaged in preparation for a um coming back to the full commission unless i'm i'm misreading that um or did we want to see we wanted them to explore the idea of maybe simplifying the 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 architecture and the massing just a bit i think mick young you suggested that maybe there was an overall sense of simplification that could uh both in landscape and in some of the comments around the architecture it's what i heard but you know obviously yeah. would i um, i mean one thing that we've done in the past in order to kind of expedite this and i'm happy to do this sean i don't want to volunteer you but if there is a push to try to get this done as quickly as possible, um, we've had uh, proponents submit to the landscape uh, commission um, commissioners uh, an updated kind of site plan prior to kind of uh, a, a larger review. And if it's just about landscape, I'm I'm fine with doing that as well. Um, just yeah, as, as would I. And just to, yeah. to clarify, I think actually it's not that there's, it's still, it's a very good landscape. It's just in the spirit of trying to get the project stronger, just a simplification in the language and potentially a clarification of what is the, the differences in the space in terms of scale and program and relationship to, you know, any indoor spaces. So because for me right now, at least in, in my understanding of it, and this may not be correct, and we don't have to go into it right now, the differentiation is really in the, the character of the, the seat walls. Are they straight? Are they curved? are they oval and historic but not as much in the in the scale and use and, and i would say i i'm quite comfortable deferring to staff on the simplification of the project i yeah. mean uh, that's it's not our job to design i think we've given some very clear direction um so i could be quite comfortable uh, yeah, I could, I could too. Yeah. If, 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 if on the architecture side, if I think our comments, you know, you've got them. I think that if, if you could work with staff to confidently feel like you've got them addressed and make those presentations back to the full commission, I'm fine with that. And then uh, handle the, the, um, some of these landscape questions uh, yeah, Christina, as a maybe, subcommittee um, kind of level. Maybe if, if the, BPDA would like to expedite this. I'm happy to have an updated site plan um, kind of sent to us. And Shauna, if you want to be part yeah, of that. Happy, happy to review it. And uh -huh. we just review Definitely. it. If yes, we receive I, it next week, you'll get something, a response from me in 24 hours. Um, um, Commissioner Kim, I definitely don't want to characterize the BPDA's position on this as wishing to somehow expedite the review. <laughs> Let me rephrase. Um, <laughs> from the comments from the commissioners, and I, I do empathize with the position they're in. Um, I'm happy to take time out to review um, the. I do feel like maybe there there could be more evolution in the design from when I saw it last, which was few months ago. So that's my only comment. But however you guys want, BPD wants to handle this if you would like to just go to another subcommittee meeting, make sure that I attend. And if um, you'd like for us to just take a moment, I could call Shauna, we could kind of send comments together. Um. Great. Well, I um, appreciate Commissioner Hassin you putting a finer point on that, and I think I would like to um, amend the summary that I gave previously. So the summary would be that um, we would recommend the project for final consideration and recommendation at a future meeting of full commission, but in intervening time um, that uh, the proponent team uh, follow up with a uh, BPDA staff um, who can forward those materials to relevant BCDC commissioners focused specifically on um, further review of landscape elements ahead Hi. of a potential meeting. But could I clarify that just a little bit? So uh, prior to the project moving forward to the full commission, 
the proponents will submit uh, a, an updated landscape plan and maybe a landscape diagram to show um, kind of just basic, some refinements to the design. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll submit comments as quickly as we can. And then at the full commission meeting, then um, any kind of revisions requested by the landscape commissioners could be addressed at that time. We would be happy to that take that path. I don't know if this is my time to say yes. Okay. Uh, absolutely, we're able to. to yeah, uh, and I promise we'll we'll turn things around quickly. This we'll, we'll wanna wanna make sure that you guys aren't sitting around for a long time. <laughs> From my seat, these the comments have been very clear, and I can see the helpfulness and the way that they'll improve the design. And I can, um, I, I'd be happy to work with the BPBA staff to make sure that the commissioners are kept up to date of the way that it's evolving before we come back to the full commission. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, thanks for that discussion. I think we have um, already promoted. Um, presenters for the next project. Um, the next project would be um, Franciscan Children's Hospital Institutional Master Plan in Brayton. And I believe Martin Bat and Crystal Hong are presenting on behalf of the proponent team. Is there anybody else that needs to be promoted for you guys to be ready to present? I think we are okay. Okay, excellent. Then please take it away, Martin. Um, we'll give you a halfway time and then a two minute warning. Okay, um, so thank you for the opportunity to represent this. We're sort of taking a step back um, on this from the prior presentation, just to show a little context and the evolution of the project working with the BPDA. So, <clears throat> um, we're here to review um, Institutional Master Plan, Article 80D. The IMP was submitted um, in July of 2023. And then large project review, which is a seven story um, clinical building for both behavioral health and medical services. <clears throat> um, and also a small gymnasium building with a connector um, to the existing remaining Kennedy Day School. And then um, obviously <clears throat> um, public realm improvements. So Franciscan Hospital is <clears throat> located on Warren Street. It's between Cambridge Street and Commonwealth Avenue. Um, Warren Street is a connector street. Um, and it is um, in amongst a series of um, institutional campuses. Uh, which include Boston Green Academy, Brighton High, Brighton Marine across the street, um, as well as St. Elizabeth's Medical Center. Um, an aerial view of the campus um, just gives a sort of overview of sort of the buildings that are adjacent to the campus in that institutional zone. Um, and you can see um, sort of Brighton High School across the street and Brighton Marine. Um, these <clears throat> campuses are characterized by um, larger floor plate buildings and, and larger and taller buildings. Slide. Uh, this is the view um, just from the other direction that again shows Bright Marine um, and the size and scale of the adjacent um, institutional buildings. For some neighborhood context, um, this is Warren Street. Um, looking, the first image on the uh, left is um, a view of Boston Green Academy, and it shows that while it's not parallel to the street, it's set back approximately 15 feet from the curb. Um, a view along um, the campus, um, the kind of fairly desolate sidewalk that exists today, um, as well as um, a view towards Com Ave, where we have some four and a half story walk ups that are um, have zero setback. Uh, the, <clears throat> this is the view across the street um, showing um, the um, the campus um, and Warren Avenue across the street. Um, so there's a view that shows Brighton Marine, um, as well as the um, Boston, I'm sorry, the Brighton High School campus, and as well as the entrance to St. Elizabeth's, which are all across the street. That's sort of the, the campus context. We also have a have a um, a, a sight line um, basically on Cambridge Street, and this is the Kennedy Rock Conservation Area. It is a um, inaccessible. Um, piece of Boston landscape um, that is basically a designated conservation area and, and a currently an urban wild. Um, this is the campus, aerial view of the campus, <clears throat> um, which shows the, the sort of development and sort of arrangement of the campus um, over the sort of history. It's, it was sort of developed as a, 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 a basically a, a 
development of linear buildings across the campus that are relatively small scale, um, one to two story and, and one three story building um, set back from um, basically set back from Warren Street and the parking lot um, in, in front of the buildings. Um, and also it just sort of shows the urban wild, which really is a, a good buffer um, to the adjacent residential. And you can see there's three current entrances. There's a main entrance on the east, a staff entrance in the middle, and the Kennedy Day School entrance on the left. Uh, this is the view of the main entrance. You can see that it's really difficult to determine that this is actually an entrance and a pedestrian entrance. Um, the campus is not handicap accessible, and for a hospital, that is a, a real issue. Um, so none of the entrances meet ADA requirements as part of the um, accessing the campus. This is the administrative entrance, and this causes confusion on the campus because patients driving by think this is the main entrance, uh, but this is the staff parking lot and administrative en entrance. Um, and then this is the Kennedy Day School entrance, the blue warning next to uh, what is Building 7. Um, and you can see this is really uh, not a hospitable um, sort of um, idea of, of entrance to a school. Uh, building 7 um, is has been identified and assessed to be the, the building in the worst condition on campus. And as part of this proposal is, propo is, is basically uh, proposed to be taken down. Uh, this is just a view of the um, service entrance on the um, west side of the campus and, and showing the Boston Green Academy um, just to give some context and Brighton High School across the street. And we do have a curb cut on Cambridge Street that we're working um, with the BPDA to minimize access to. So we're really trying to limit um, vehicle access back onto Cambridge Street. But this this is a view um, of, um, of the Kennedy Day School building. Um, this is the existing site plan. Um, as you can see, it is an arrangement of, of buildings that sort of spread out over time, um, really um, limiting the sort of campus development. Um, and as you as you look at the campus, you can see there's really two open areas for development. Um, you can see Building 7 on the left. Um, and so <clears throat> one of the things about the campus is just um, where it's an active, ongoing hospital. So it, it's very difficult to take any buildings offline um, but we are able to take Building 7 offline as part of the development slide. Um, we also, um, you know, thinking about the future of Franciscan, um, the idea is to, is to um, flip the campus and, and basically engage with um, the community and, and bring the buildings closer to the street um, so that they can see activity um, and connect to the street and connect to the public realm. Um, and so the idea being that the, the future campus will actually uh, reimagine the entire campus. Let me go to the next slide. And while this is not part of the IMP because the IMP only goes out 10 years, the idea is to actually replace the entire campus with a future building that uh, basically um, defines the full modal setback along the north side of Warren Street um, with a central drop-off, a parking garage, and then a, a, a basically a um, two-story connector, um, which is an interior um, landscaped and um, program space that connects to a really large healing garden um, that provides you know, future ability to provide full geothermal to the entire campus. So this really provides a context of the decisions that are being made. Um, and so what we have is we have our existing site plan we have our IMP site plan, which is our 10 year vision. And then we have our long term vision for the campus so to be a, a state of the art healthcare facility providing for the pediatric uh, behavioral health and, and rehabilitation of medical patients that they serve. The proposed um, project, um, in the context of, of what's adjacent to it, um, is not um, the largest floor plate building on. Warren Street, and it's not the tallest building on Warren Street. Um, it is um, defining an urban edge that's closer to Warren Street, but I think that's part of the um, sort of campus approach. This is a view from the other angle. Um, you can see Brighton Marine is, is slightly taller, and Brighton High School has a larger floor plate across the street. We are <coughs> um, looking at um, the project, given it's a behavioral health hospital, we do have some security um, 
and, and pediatric patients, we really have to take care of them. But um, the goal is to um, really redefine the urban domain um, along Warren Street um, and really um, take that as, as um, the, the facility engaging or beginning to engage with Warren Street um, and being inclusive as part of that process. So the green area at the base is identified as um, public domain um, as part of this project. The teal area are private patient healing gardens. And then the, um, the sort of light green area to the top is the urban wilderness, which does create the buffer that we're actively going to manage and maintain as part of the project. We do have a lot of um, complex circulation. We have school drop-off, um, as well as um, pedestrian routes, bike um, access, um, ambulance um, requirements, um, as well as patient uh, visitor drop-off and parking. We've significantly reduced the amount of, of parking on site um, and significant, significantly reduced the, um, uh, the amount of asphalt uh, that is on site as part of the development. Martin, you were just yeah. over. Halfway, okay. Um, we do have a comprehensive landscape plan that's been prepared by Terra Inc. Um, that shows the development of those private healing garden spaces, as well as um, looking at um, the Boston Complete Streets Guide and creating a range of, um, of different exper pedestrian experiences in that public domain, including creating a, 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 a drop-off port that has public access and, and some whimsical sculpture. Really, the idea is to... Um, to engage um, with the landscape, with the street, to, to create some wonder as you go down Warren Street um, as part of the idea of this being a children's hospital. Um, in detail, um, this is sort of the, the programmatic part, but I think it's important. Um, as hospitals are very complex buildings, so this is the um, section of the building uh, which shows that pink area at the bottom, which is our lobby, our kitchen, food court, um, cafeteria, family resource area. So they're, they're the semi, semi public spaces inside the, um, inside the campus um, that staff and, and patients and, and families will use. We have um, three floors of inpatient medical and inpatient behavioral. We have a shelved floor for future flexibility. And we have a rather, rather large penthouse because um, for redundancy and future all electrification, um, it is a very equipment intensive building. This is a typical clinical floor plan and it just shows the, the density of what we're working with. On the right hand side is, <clears throat> excuse me, is the um, inpatient rehab and medical units. They are rooms that patients will have a lot of equipment, so they're larger rooms. They will be in the rooms for extended period of times. So the objective of those rooms is really to have natural light flood into those rooms, which is reflected on the exterior of the building as being a, a large glazed area as part of the facade. On the left-hand side, we have um, smaller rooms for our behavioral health patients um, that are, um, so that is reflected on the facade with smaller scale um, openings, um, but it just shows the density of what we're working with. That plan is re repeated on three floors. This is our arrival area. Um, we have a, a drop-off area for patients with a glazed canopy. Um, we have um, the public domain is, um, and we'll show on sections, uh, widened. Uh, we've included a, um, street trees along the whole campus. And then we have a, a, a small inviting courtyard area uh, with the goal of, again, some sculpture and whimsy um, that will be incorporated in, into that overall. Um, process. We are working with the BPDA to optimize this from, from a public domain perspective, balancing the drop-off needs. So we've still got a little bit of work to do here, um, but um, overall, that's the objective. And then you can see the lobby of the building, um, and the goal is that the lobby does connect to the to the um, to the public domain and overlooks um, Warren Street, and that connects connects the the programs and Franciscan back to the community. Um, this is a section through um, the sidewalk at the building, showing the clinical building lobby. We have a, a variable perennial um, area, a seat wall, which is really defining the edge of the campus. Um, and then we have a 10-foot pedestrian zone, five-foot furnishing zone. Um, you, were just, you were just at time. Um, if you were close to your last, last couple slides here. Okay, I'll just... Let's through them quickly. Um, just more views of the um, lobby level arrival port. Um, can skip that one. 
Um, then just views of the building. We are working um, with, um, you know, we plan to come back with some more detail on some of the fenestration of the building, um, like the materiality of, of the penthouse and, and some fenestration on the glass, but um, continuing to work on, on that um, other view of the building. Uh, this is the Warren Street view at the entrance, just showing the, the view back across the court, as well as the um, entrance area, which is slightly elevated from the street level. Uh, materiality of the campus is a blonde brick campus. We're planning to respect that and just do a contemporary interpretation of the existing campus, knowing that our building is scaled very, very differently um, and is trying to project a modern contemporary version of, um, of the, the sort of Franciscan palette. And that's the end of the presentation with a view of the lobby that looks back over Lawrence Street. Great, thank you. I'd like to open the floor to the commissioners for discussion. Just a quick reminder that commissioners um, Gilly Smith, Hassine, Coderitas, Love, Lubinow, and Sykes were present at the last uh, subcommittee meeting in December and that um, Commissioner Kim has recused herself and left the meeting. No need to raise hands, I think, um, oh. open dialogue style. I guess I one thing I'll say is before we talk about the comments, um, I do want to thank you for a much more complete uh, presentation around the context. Um, that was very, very helpful to understand the, I mean, I know that they're they're just being baked, but to understand the future vision of the hospital and that the that the campus is ultimately designed to, to be replaced um and that um you know putting and even showing us the floor plates of the of the of the the uh departments which i know is really not public realm but it is very very helpful in terms of understanding your proposal and the project um i know i was um difficult the last time um but i i and, and i still have uh concerns about the size of the project and its relationship to the street but i do very much appreciate the context so thank you for that yep um I, i'm gonna probably repeat comments i made the last time uh it's commissioner sykes it, it's interesting scale the scale differential in what you've presented it's very big and it's very small in, in many ways, it, it gets very granular, but then there are some very high level organizational ideas that I think are great. I mean, I, I think the diagram with the light dark green, light light gray and and uh, light green is, is such a powerful concept. I mean, to me, th this is clear as to how you plan to zone the site. The part I struggle with a bit is the interface and the edges between the places. I, you know, you have a lot of renderings where how people will interact with the open spaces you create isn't really clear or what it is that experience will be like. And then you have sort of the seat wall section, uh, you know, at, at a very small scale. So I guess where, where I really come down, where it comes down to for me, I think is, this is another one of those projects because of its size and its complexity where a fly through would, would help to understand the diversity of places and how you move through them and around them and how the buildings interface with the public realm and the landscape. That, that's my personal feeling. So that, that's my comment. Could, could I pick up on this a little bit, um, Kirk? Or so I, I actually do want to talk about this this dark green space. I, I do very much appreciate the context. I definitely appreciate the future vision um, to be because I think we were all suspecting that. But it could you switch to that slide for just a second and then come back to this one? The future vision plan diagram. Yeah. But what this does actually even more so underscores the significance of this central public space that is your drop off. It's the only thing that is going to remain on the, the whole site is this central space where the is your parking and drop off is. This, 
so it is your most significant landscape space. I think the streetscape, there's some very nice ideas about the streetscape, but at the middle of it, now let, now maybe we can go to a plan of that, that space. It feels very much a service space and the landscape moves within it are very, very small. Um, they don't, they really don't have the strength to hold that space. Even if it does need to become a vehicular space, and I would really look at ways to minimize that as a vehicular space, this is a space where I believe you can inform, you can put a lot of investment both in, in, in sort of design effort and in materials and in character, because it's the central space that will stay for 30 years. So in, instead of it feeling like it really is just a couple of green things moving around the, the or sort of filling in the green the way that the traffic is moving, how can you make this a spectacularly strong entry court that still is functional, that still works for your very important mission, but that can hold its own with these in, in the current context and very significantly in the in the future context. Um, that, make, that makes a lot of sense. I think that um, the you know just working with the BPDA, we we are um, looking to, and they have been obviously um, saying very similar things. We are we are looking to how to um, minimize it feeling like a car first. Um, environment and making it feel like a people first environment. Um, some of that may be um, looking at ways to relocate some parking um, to make that um, more um, accessible for, um, for pedestrians and, and sort of continue yeah, re to relocating parking if you can. I think that yeah. the the number and scale of trees isn't even the spacing of the trees isn't really sort of because the, the trees will have a certain scale to it in the, in the landscape. So yep. really thinking of this as a significant court as well as as well as a pedestrian space, I think is is really important to, to the and and that's following from also um, in 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 a similar strategy to to some of, of Kirk's comments, um, Commissioner Sykes comments that the landscape moves and I understand the mission and it should be playful and it should be enjoyable, but it also needs to be strong because it's going to have these massive buildings in front of it. And it is the address of, of the, the building. So, Yeah, and just to pick up on that, I think for me, the, char the thing I'm wrestling with is the character of the landscape across the street, you know, south of, uh, on page south of, on Warren with that berm like quality across the high school where you have space and then this building that is so close to the edge that is not going to contribute to that character is really I'm struggling with but before we even talk about that Christina I I have a question for you are we reviewing the IMP or are we re actually approving the project the building that's being presented to us understanding it that it's both the institutional master plan and the ADB approval needed for the new building. Okay. Um, okay, that helps. <laughs> I, I think we need to know more about the other building uh, on the gym on the backside, um, by the way, but maybe that's a, a future meeting. That, I think that's a future meeting. We, um, it, it's a, um, just very, very simply, it's a, it's a two-story gymnasium. It's a relatively modest building. It's not particularly visit uh, visible from the public way, um, but um, we will give you some information on that. I'd love to hear any design commentary from BPDA staff that may exist on this project. I'd love to know what kind of dialogue you're in with them because uh, I, 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 you know, I think there are a lot of comments uh, that are helpful. Obviously, this is very similar, if not the same, to what you showed us last time, and and you're contextualizing the design, which I appreciate, but. You know, my concerns about the scale of the building um, and its proximity to the street remain um, uh, with the with the 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 information that you've given us. And I'm just curious, Christina, um, if at some point the the reviewer, uh, I don't know who's reviewing the project, could let us know what what 
what the city is, whether the city thinks this is the right approach or, or whether they're um, pushing back on any of the issues of setback or height on the street. Yeah, I right. believe I'm joined by the um, primary design reviewer, Scott Slarsky. Oh, Scott's on. Great. Did we yeah. hear from Scott? <laughs> hey, hey, David. Um, yeah. yeah. Can you. you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, we've been working quite a long time with this project, and we also have been struggling with the scale. And, you know, one of the things that we directed the proponent to do was to try to show the other institutional projects that are in this neighborhood that are of a similar scale. One of them at least is, is larger. Um, however, I think that one of the things that we struggle with is that the existing campus is of a very kind of, you know, 1930s, 1940s scale, and most of it will remain once this new building is constructed. So the idea of the institutional master plan scheme that will flip the entire project from being, you know, a pavilion in the center of the site to a garden surrounded by a building is one that we have been clinging to as a future vision for the site to justify the scale of this building, because this is, this is the scale of the building that this institution needs. So we've been struggling for the proponent to justify uh, the scale with the context. Um, and uh, I, I mean, we're getting closer and closer and closer. I think that Shauna's comments about the front court becoming a significant landscape piece that is an entry, a kind of threshold to the site that's more green and less car centric is something that we have asked this proponent to engage in, and we would hope that that would come to fruition. But um, that's are helpful. I, I feel like we're moving in the right direction. I, I, one of the things that I've been wondering is, that, is it possible to break down the scale of the building in the approach to the facade, which has a kind of grand idea of, you know, large scale of a curtain wall, um, you know, compared to the the way that you see it in the context of the existing building. Um, so I, I guess, I, yeah. There I mean, I, I, I think, I thank you, Scott. I, I guess I agree with your comments. I think we're talking about a project that could be at sort of an awkward stage for a very long time, right? That sort of awkward in between what it is and what it's to become and how to mitigate that as best as possible. I think some of the things that I'm struggling with and is just actually, uh, while we got a lot of contextual information, like this view is very helpful, it suggests to me that that perhaps there's some uh, mitigation setbacks, et cetera, that need to happen on these views. But I'd also love to see the building, this is where a model would be so helpful. Yeah. I'd also like to see the building from the other end where it's, you know, we have these little courtyards that are adjacent to the historic structure. And I don't think I understand those spaces. Um, and so it's hard to, um, comment on how the building interacts, even if it's for a short time, with the existing campus. I, you know, when I look at the overall campus plan, I wish the hospital could have the wherewithal to just chop that end of the campus off <laughs> and redo it, um, because it would make a a much uh, cleaner relationship. What worries me is is approving something that could be this way for you know decades um could we could we look at could you more clearly describe the relation are you talking about i know you're talking about that whole end but the the building that is directly behind it with the awkward courtyards between it could we could we talk about that maybe you could just zoom in on on that because what I, yeah, yeah it's like the section between the new building and building one it's like that's to me, I mean, I, 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 is it public realm or not? I'm not sure, but it's, that's what I'm trying to understand. And is there any ability to um, in some way shift the building or parts of the building towards building one? Yeah, that's exactly to... what I was thinking, David. Yeah, yeah. Because it, I think it's not going to be nice landscape space no matter what. Right. So, you know, maybe there's a way of shifting the building, maybe if, even if need be, uh, you know, covering that space 
in, in some way um, so that we could get a little bit of relief on the street. And I think, I mean, I think we've, <clears throat> you know, we've, we actually um, did reduce the, the floor plate, the, the width of the building on Orange Street. Um, I, we can look at that in a little bit more detail, um, but the, we, we, we do have um, some just sort of um, issues with related to um, that building one's a school. Um, and so we actually have to have a, a certain distance of separation um, to maintain windows in that building. So there's some code related things that we've been trying to respect as part of that, that process. Um, and, and I do understand the idea of, of we do have a, a, a very different scale building on, on, on this campus. I mean, where we are, you know, we're working with a campus where all the buildings were built incrementally, um, you know, 40 plus years ago. Um, and they, they really are of a, a different scale. Any contemporary healthcare building on this built, on this campus that is 280,000 square feet um, is going to um, struggle to relate uh, to them. It's just a, it's a reality um, that we are, we are obviously struggling with. Um, I think the, the interim state <clears throat> by, and this is part of sort of BPDA's review, was sort of really focusing on the courtyard, focusing on the, the building to access and, and um, making sure that we're respectful of what's remaining on campus um, in the, after this first phase is done was really, um, you know, what we're trying to focus on as part of that process. I think the thing that we're just struggling with is I don't see a time where that central building two is going to go away or if it is it's a real you know it's going to be way way in the future and dealing with this building that is too close to the sidewalk is too tall it has an one unoccupied floor, which I am sure will be programmed. Hospitals always need space. And then a giant penthouse on top. It's just, it's just a lot. And there must be a way to figure out how to break down the massing. So it's at least comes down a little bit at the street and relates better to, to building two. I also think it comes so close, like that moment where, you know, the building touches building two. It, 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 it's yeah. so tight and I see your floor plan and I can tell that there's not enough give to reduce the width of that building. And it's a real, it's, it's, I'm just really struggling to figure out how to comment on this in a productive way because the scale is so out of character. You showed institutional buildings in the neighborhood, but all of them are freestanding with plenty of landscape around them on all sides and nothing really comes to this urban condition that you've made here and and I think we're just trying to help figure out how to set this up for future success I don't think there's small moves that need to be made here I think there's big moves that need to be made And I think from the last time to this time, we're only seeing small moves. Yeah, I, I think we were representing to show the, the, the history of the decision making for the sort of last two years that we've been working with the BPDA to get to this point, um, <clears throat> just so that it provided some context for, um, for why, uh, why, you know, why we're proposing this building in this location, but the, um, Programmatically, um, the the existing buildings really aren't fit for purpose. Um, you know, they're really not. The floor plates aren't designed for the type of healthcare um, that they um, that they Franciscan provides and the complex care for the patients. So, um, so the the idea, I mean, the long term goal of the campus is to um, basically you know re reinvent the campus um, to be a, a um, state of the art sort of you know national model for um, the, the behavioral health and, and type of care that they're providing on campus. So the, the, the idea of um, <clears throat> you know, needing a, a, a building with a floor plate of 
of these dimensions um, to support the, the care is that that's just it, it's the, the, the nature of the program it's the nature of the mission um, of Franciscan children's so what is a side street I'm sorry it, um, your your building is a, an L shape yep. and I want and I wonder that is adjacent to um, you know a building of some massing and size and I just wonder oh. is that the place to if you take a rectangle that runs up north, you know, up and down the page, and that's where we have a little bit more height in order to bring down the scale of the leg that parallels Warren Street. Um, I, I wonder if that's just throwing out an idea, like how do we give you both the height and the program that you need, but really try to minimize the scale of that volume in, and in particular the penthouse um along Warren Street. So maybe what I'm asking is a series of massing studies. I certainly think models would be helpful yes. to see if there's any other way to configure all of this program, under knowing that even maybe more height is going to be affected at, at the corner perhaps, but just to tie in to the scale of the rest of the campus in particular building too. Yeah, I, th I think actually we asked for last meeting, we asked for massing studies, even if they were historical massing studies of the other options that had been explored. But maybe to clarify, are you talking about looking, it, so the building that is on the, the top left, the white building, what is that? That's the existing building, correct? That's, a, that's the existing Kennedy Day School. That's the Kennedy School and how tall is that? Um, on the on the top left, um, like the, the gray building that's on our site, right above the, the purple box. Yeah, no, that's the Kennedy School. That's a two-story building. It's a two-story building, and then you said it's also a building. One is also a school building. Building one is also a school building. So the building that is the small building that is in, effectively encapsulated um, is part of the school. Because I'm, you know, I, I'm a, I am a landscape architect, but even from an open space perspective, I, I'm in true support that the, the pieces don't seem to be working together in, in the, the short the short term, which could be quite a long term. It doesn't seem to be making the outdoor spaces very usable around the building one school at all. But but I think the the comfort the relationship to the street and the tone that it's setting for the overall campus, even if it were to be mirrored on the other side, is is not, a, it doesn't feel a urbanistically gracious um, massing response. So I am in support of, of Mimi's proposition of seeing some massing study, alternate massing studies. Um, I, I think, I, and we we can certainly um, explore that. Um, I, I think the you know the, the floor plates and the, the size of the building and the programs that are being proposed, and and you can obviously you can see that it's 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 a large floor plate building. Um, <clears throat> the floor plates are stacked. It's it's a you know it, it's a it's a lot of program. It's a lot of um, yeah. you know it's it's a lot of space, and it's a it, it's. Um, It, it's going to be very difficult if we if we're a two hundred eighty thousand square foot building to make it feel contextual with a one and a half story nineteen forties building. It's just going to be very difficult. Um, yeah. I think. Yeah, you know, and I I understand we're never going to get to that scale, but but is our way to at least step you know the massing down um, along Warren Street? I think is is you know particular and. I, I'm just struggling with the location of the gym and the location of the new proposed, you know, 280,000 square foot building, just really encroaching and compromising the quality of space, you know, within the areas of building one. Um, but I do think that the context is helpful, but, you know, and you could see even on this diagram, the building to the left is a institutional building with a lot of green space around it. The Brighton High School has 
space around it. So there are buildings of this massing and height. They're just not that densely packed on a site without green space. And I wonder if there's cues there. Yeah, that, I, I think one of the things we, we're also struggling with the camp, the campus um, obviously as it was developed incrementally because um, <clears throat> it's a large site, um, all of these buildings and I think David, you know, spoke to it, it, it would, you know, the, the, we have to maintain operation of the hospital um, while we're, um, while we're building. Um, and so it's, 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 it, there's very limited opportunities to site a building that, of this size on campus. Is the gym staying in the 30, 40 year plan? Yeah, it is actually if you go back to the thing. So. Yeah, it, it it is proposed to stay, but again, the 30, 40 year plan is is speculative and you know that will the school um, develop that area below it might that actually you know that's shown as, as interior space um, that's open but there probably be school programs there but the gym does stay so i i think what we're asking is for um massing you know massing studies um that you could um fit your program and try to create a more buffer zone along the sidewalk i guess the other thing we could also ask is there any um uh planning of the street you know for um what, what's the street initiative i'm totally like having a blank right now um <laughs> Boston Complete Streets. Yes, the Complete Streets. This it's meets terrible. The, my <laughs> yeah, the, for, a, for a connector street, this meets the Boston Street Complete Street criteria uh, in terms of having a a, a, um, a zone for tree planting, a ten foot sidewalk, um, and then we we're 23, 24 feet back um, from the curb. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was trying to see if there's any way that we could, if there was any future, you know, reduction of width of the street to gain a little bit more, you know, frontage along the building. Um, that's where I was going with that. Right. Christina, should we see if there's public comments? Yes. Um, I just closed my uh, script for public comments. Um, so at this time, we would like to invite um, any members of the public who wish to testify to raise their digital hand. Um, if you have joined the meeting tonight by phone, you can press nine to raise your hand and six to uh, mute and unmute yourself. And I see that, um, Barb, you have raised your hand uh, to comment. Thank you, Christina. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. Um, I'm a daily walker on Warren Street. I'm a long-term resident of Ulster Brighton. And I can't imagine why anybody in their sane mind would want to build this incredibly hideous bulk of a building on Warren Street. If we're forced to have this building when there is a real medical need and we can in fact fill this hospital like we can't with St. Elizabeth's, which is right across the street, I would suggest you build this building where your, your institutional master plan shows a parking lot. Um, you need to come up off the street. When I walk down Warren Street, which is fairly densely populated, busy area, when I walk past the apartments at Commonwealth Avenue, I'm walking by a beautiful cut rock hillside. When I walk by Brighton Marine, which is in fact bigger, I don't even see it because it sits on an elevation. And I'm walking by a beautiful green hillside. When I walk by Brighton High School, even better, the hillside's terrace. It has trees and sculpture on it. It's beautiful. And then I would come and see this hulk of a building. I noticed you didn't show us any shots from Cambridge Street. Why? Because another course to college, 
Boston Community Academy is two stories and this thing is going to loom over it. I can't imagine why, what would possess anybody to build this on Warren Street in Brighton. It's just totally inappropriate. You need to move it on the lot. Um, I don't know if you presented your institutional master plan to the community. I never saw any notices for it, but you might want to rethink how you're using all it since you seem to have a larger plan for this campus of where you're going to put this building. This might be an inappropriate place for this building. I don't understand why the city of Boston feels building right up onto the sidewalk is any way appropriate for certain neighborhoods. And I think Brighton is one of those neighborhoods. Um, I, just, I just can't believe that this is even being considered, um, particularly the flat fronts. Um, it's the building, the, you know, sometimes the upper stories can be stepped back, et cetera, et cetera. It's just on the wrong place on your lot. And, and, and Mr. Bat, I think you might want to you might want to take a minute and look at what the actual campus is and see if there is a better place to place a building of this size and mass. Um, were this to come up in front of the ACA or something, I'd be voting no. Um, thank you. Thank you for your comments, Barbara. Um, I just want to uh, point out that the draft of the institutional master plan is on the um, proposed projects uh, BPDA website. It was posted on July 27, 2023. Are there any other folks who would wish to contribute public testimony at this time? Shana, is your hand raised because you have further comment? Oh, no. Oh, that's no, okay. sorry, I didn't ever take oh. it down. All right. Um, so, commissioners, we don't need to vote, uh, but we do need some kind of consensus for next steps. I think um, I'll say that from my perspective, I'm hearing a need for additional review at a future design uh, at a future um, design committee session, um, and lots to think and talk about at that next session. Yeah, I I agree, and I you know appreciate the the hard work Martin into the presentation. You gave us some context that was very helpful. Um, I think just stepping back and and you know thinking about massing is going to be really really critical. And I really understand it's a hard problem. Uh, we're not trying to give you a hard time. Just to uh, give you a hard time, it's just that scale of building is um, is really complicated to uh, to imagine on that site. And so um, I guess what I'm encouraging you is to really come with some different ideas the next time we see you. Okay, we can certainly do some message for this. I, just, I, I, I do want to reiterate of all of the institutional sites in that area. It is it's the only one because of resources that was never developed. And so we're, we are working with a site that is truly um, historically underdeveloped um, for the types of programs that they um, do on campus, um, which which is creating, a, you know, obviously a difficulty knowing that we've got existing very small scale buildings and they're, they're not particularly beautiful buildings. It's not a particularly beautiful campus. Um, so it's, you know, it, it, we understand the struggle. We've been obviously working with the BPA for a two years and, and and they've certainly been helping provide us some guidance to get the programs that we need and, and try and um, get as much space on the sidewalk as we can or the, you know, in the urban domain. So we'll, we'll continue to look at it. Great, thank you, Martin. Um, we'll also put the project manager to follow up um, for, with an internal meeting to summarize the comments we, we heard here today. Um, we don't, I don't think we formally adjourn either, <laughs> but this was the last uh, presentation on our agenda. So um, are we good to close the meeting this evening? I think so. Yes. Wonderful. We are so appreciative of your time, commissioners, um, and look forward to next month's full committee meeting. Thank you, Ms. Rico. Right, thank you. Thank you very thank much, you. Mr. Yeah. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.